Hi everyone, thank you for joining me. Today we will be going over immunization mnemonics. And before we get started on that, I wanted to share with you a few things that are going to be useful in your preparation for the exams. And I apologize for using the PowerPoints, but I feel like that's the best way I could um, present my information much better. Okay, so before we get started, I wanted to let you know that the best way to use mnemonics is to understand to help is to help you retain the vital concepts. And once you retain the vital concepts, you're able to think through the questions and the exams in a in a, in, in the best way possible. I would say that. Then the next thing is. Don't just memorize the mnemonics and go into the exam with just knowing the mnemonics. The importance of the mnemonics, as I said, is to retain the material. And then after retaining the material, you go over it until you're able to explain the material to yourself and you can even teach it to a five-year-old. Um, and then once you use, once you have the vital concepts at the back of your hand, the back of your head, whatever, you are able to tackle the questions in the best way possible. All right, so I wanted to give reference to the person who actually inspired my video or the, who helped me understand immunizations in a much broader way. The biggest problem was for me to know exactly what the immunization or the vaccines were first and then to know when they are administered. And Yusimail Shortcuts, who is a YouTuber, was able to tackle this problem for me. So I am so grateful to her and I am creating this video in reference to her material. And before we get started, it's best for us to know exactly what the immunizations are. So we have the influenza vaccines, then we have the pneumococcal vaccines, uh, which, it, which we have the conjugated versus the non-conjugated one. And then we have the hepatitis A, hepatitis B. Sometimes this one can come in a combo. We have the DTAP, Tdap, and the TD, which is a booster vaccine. We have the MMR, the measles, mumps, rubella. We have the varicella, chickenpox, polio, we have Hib, which is Haemophilus influenza. We have the meningococcal. We have the HPV, which is the human papillomavirus, the happy zoster vaccines, the rotavirus vaccines, and the typhoid vaccines, and yellow fever. So it is, it, it is important to know when and how to give the, some of this, like the typhoid vaccines and the yellow fever, are given when someone is traveling to a country where the area is well known to uh, is well known to cause a lot of issues in terms of the um, in in terms of actually you know uh, being having an outbreak that's the word I'm looking for. So without further ado, let's get started. So what USML shortcuts has taught me or what I've come to understand, we need to know that at birth, we first of all start with the, the uh, hepatitis B vaccine. And then from there, we go to two months, the child goes into the doctor's office at two months to get the other doses of vaccine. So we have the to be doctor hip, which is B, which is the hepatitis B, we have the DTAP, the first dose of DTAP, rotavirus, hemophilus influenza, and then we also have the um, polio vaccine and the first pneumococcal vaccine. At four months, the, the, uh, the child is getting Dr. Hip. You see, so we start with B, then we had B, Dr. Hip, four, Dr. Hip, okay? So the four represents four months. D is the DTAP, R is 
uh, the rotavirus, see if the child hasn't received the rotavirus yet. Then we have um, polio vaccine if the child has not received the polio vaccine. And they can also have the Prevna 13 if they haven't received any just yet. And then we have it six months. So to be Dr. Hip, it takes six months. So six months to be Dr. Hip. So six months to be Dr. Hip. So we go back to what they were given in two months, but this time we're adding the flu vaccine. Okay, so here we are adding the flu vaccine because this is the time when the child is beginning to, um, is ready for the flu vaccine. Remember that when a child is first given the flu vaccine before they are about seven years old, they need to have two vaccines of the influenza, of the influenza vaccine, I should say. So they'll have an influenza vaccine here, the first one. And then after about, I think it's either four to six months, they can have another dose of flu vaccine. So the two vaccines. So the question can come in and you need to read through the question and then understand the answers that are provided to eliminate which one doesn't make sense. And once you understand the vital, vital concept, as I explained before, you will be able to identify what they're asking for. So if in, a, in an exam, you notice that they're saying the child needs to have um, to influenza vaccine when they're receiving influenza vaccine for the first time, then that's going to be the answer. But you need to read and understand what is being given in front of you because the questions are going to be very different. And then we have um, 12 to 18 months. Things are beginning to change here. So this is going to be a matter of writing down this mnemonics, but then going over and over the material so you understand. So here we have the MMR that's first given. And then we have the hepatitis A, which is given in two doses. And then we have also the next dose of DTAP. Then we have the HIP, which is the um, hemophilus influenza vaccine. And then we have also the a pneumococcal vaccine again, and then we have the virus seller. At four to six years, this is the time where we're looking back and seeing what other uh, vaccines are they looking to catch up. So here we are giving the virus seller if they haven't hadn't received it. We are also giving another dose of DTAP. We are giving a dose of influenza. Sorry, the I polio vaccine. And then we're also giving the MMR if they have not, the ninja coco, sorry, at this point again. So in this case, and then at 11 to 12 years, we are giving the D, sorry, the T DAP at seven years old. And then we are also giving the HPV virus, the HPV vaccine. In this case, if they are below 15 years old, they only get two doses. If they are above 15 years old, we're giving three doses. And we're giving meningococcal vaccine. And 16 to 18, again, we're giving the meningococcal vaccine. And this is the time that it's a booster. And you know now they're beginning to go into dormitory, so we need to look into giving those vaccines. So typically what I'm saying is that after six months, this formula takes a different form. I mean, this um, understanding this mnemonic takes a different form, but you need to go over the material over and over so you get to know. And also down here, I have the combinations that you also need to know. So if, um, if you're asked, maybe the, the patient is going to get pro, Proquil, which is an MMR press varicella, you need to know when is the first time are you going to be able to give the MMR or the varicella? It can be given beyond 12, beyond one year. So if, if this is going to come up in a different form, you're able to understand the vital concept and give the answer as required. So once again, we can go over this so we understand the material once more. So at birth, the baby is given the, he the hepatitis B vaccine. So this is just B. And then at two months, which is to be Dr. Hep, 
it takes two months. So the Hep, hep B, DTA, protavirus, HIB, which, which is the Haemophilus influenza, I, um, polio vaccine, and the pneumococcal. And for Dr. HIP, it takes about, it, at four months, you, you're given the DTAP, rotavirus again, if they haven't received it. The HIB, if they have the, this can be um, HIBRIX, which is a combination of, which can be a combination of uh, the HIP, hepatitis B and the Hibrix again. So this can be given at this point. And then we have the iPolio and we have the, uh, the Prevner 13. At six months, we say it takes about six months to be Dr. Hep. And here we know that we have uh, Hep B, Dita, Protovirus, Hib, iPolio, and um, pneumococcal vaccine if they haven't received one yet. And in this case, we add one more, which is the influenza vaccine. And then 12 to 18, we have the MMR, we have the hepatitis A. Remember hepatitis A can be given at some point here where we have the uh, hepatitis B because it comes in a combination. We also have the hemophilus influenza vaccine. We have um, the pneumococcal vaccine again and the virus seller. So while going through this, you need to know how many doses are required for each one of them. I've written some of them there so then it's easier for you to know. But in this case, when you have this formula or this um, mnemonic written out, you can just count one, two, three, three doses of hepatitis B. And then for DTAP, it's five doses. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's how you get to understand how to go about this, um, this formula. And I'm not going to go over all of all of the information I have on my on my uh, worksheet here, but I'll recommend that you create your own. Please understand the combination so you're able to identify when you're given um, combinations in your exams. The next point is knowing which ones are live vaccines. The Rx Prep gives does a good job of giving us a nice mnemonic, which is cozy IV room. Remember that cholera. Um, can be oral or IM. And then we also have the oral form of typhoid. That's the one that's live. Then we have the Zostavax, the yellow fever, intranasal influenza, varicella, rotavirus, and MMR are live, or they're live vaccines. So look out for the, you know what, you can be given this and you can be given the MMRV, which is a combination between MMR and the virus seller. Most of the um, vaccines are are either IM or subcutaneous. So look out for what for so for the ones that are subcutaneous and that are given subcutaneously and IM are polio and pneumovax. The rest are IM. And when it comes to the gauge that you use for the vaccines, when it's an IM, it's 22 to 25. When it's subcutaneous, it's 23 to 25. And then the size of the needle is five over eight in the fatty tissues of the tricep. You need to know this detail, fatty tissue over the tricep, and it's given at 45 degree angle. The other thing is you need to know what refrigeration temperatures and frozen temperatures are. So for the refrigeration temperature, it's 36 degree Fahrenheit, uh, which is between 36 degrees Fahrenheit to 46. And then if it is in Celsius, it's two degrees Celsius or eight degree Celsius. In this point, I would recommend looking at the formula for calculating or converting between degree Celsius to 
um, Fahrenheit over vice versa. And then here we're looking at the ones that have allergy to neomycin. We have the MMRV, the zoster virus, and the polio. And then we, the encapsulated organisms that we need to look at, especially for patients who ha have um, asplenia or sickle cell, are the strep pneumococcus, the hem, uh, hem which is hemophilus influenza, and then Neisseria meningitis. And then this is important to know because infectious disease is heavily um, tested in the exam. So, and it seems to be appearing in most of the um, chapters, almost all the chapters we need to look at how, you know, that organ is being influenced by in, in infectious diseases or infections. And then we have, when it comes to a diabetes patient, what type of immunizations can they be given? Usually there are two. Always, I recommend looking at the guidelines because they change. In this case, what we have in the Rx prep or what I'm reading as of now is pneumococcal pneumovax 23. And then it also has to be given when the patient is over 65 years old. And then we also have the Hep B, which is between which is given between 19 to 59 or over 60, anyone who hasn't received it yet. When it comes to an adolescent patient or child, we can give MCV, which is the Manveo Hep uh, HPV. When they are below 15 years old, we, we give two doses. When they are above 15 years old, we give three doses, and we which we now move to Tdap instead of the Dtap. It's the Tdap, and then for anyone who has immunodeficiency, we give Prevna thirteen, and then eight months after we give the Prevna or oh, the Numavax twenty three, and then from there we have to look at their CD four counts in order for us to be able to give any of the um, the live vaccines. We need to know that there are some medications that actually um, that can render some of the vaccines inactive, especially um, like the varicella or the live vaccines. They can be rendered inactive when when some of the antiviral medications are taken. Uh, so when it comes to a healthcare professional, influenza vaccines are given. Tdap varicella, MMR, and this is in case if they do not have any records of having or having immunity on this. So that is going to be the end of our um, little mnemonic. But like I mentioned, this is only to help you know, be familiar with some of the vaccines and immunizations and when they're given, but it's going to be mostly your responsibility to go over all of this material on your own in order for you to understand, you know, retain the material and apply it by doing the questions at the end of the book and do more questions if you can get, if you can um, get more questions outside of the um, Rx prep, but I mostly focused on Rx prep first in order with a goal of understanding the vital concepts that they usually give at the bottom of the questions. You know, once you click answer, they would give you a vital point at the bottom. I would really pay attention to those. If you have any questions, please go ahead and uh, leave them below in, in the comment section below. Please like, subscribe and share this video. And thank you to UCML Shortcuts for this uh, easy immunization schedules. And plus, I want you to know that you have everything you need to pass these exams. You are supported and loved. The world is looking forward to your services and talents. You have braved pharmacy school or whichever medical field you're in, and you, you can brave these exams to success in your endeavors. Thank you.